So the loads that we discussed till now, they were more or less such loads which were not varying with time. Whatever was the magnitude of load being applied, that was not changing. And these loads are called as static loads, which do not change in magnitude or their direction with respect to time. So these static loads we dealt with in the complete subject of strength of materials and till now in machine design as well. But if you look around and you observe that what kind of forces are acting on any particular component or any particular machine element, then you will realize that not all the forces that acts on it are static. And main forces which are acting on it externally are not static at all. You can consider weight to be a static force, although the magnitude of weight can also change with time, okay, the, due, due to wear and tear of the machine elements or maybe due to dislocation, due to change in the location of any particular machine, the value of acceleration due to gravity may change. But all these changes are very minor. Hence, we consider the weight to be almost static. We do not consider any variation in the weight of the component. So, weight is considered a static force. But any other force that you apply externally, any load you apply, any force you apply, all these things generally are not static. You consider any element, any machine which is open to the atmosphere. What are the different types of forces that can act on it? None of those forces are very much predictable and obviously not same with time. Any wind force is acting. So how is the direction of wind same all the time? No, it's magnitude, direction, everything changes. Even if you consider any design element which is inside the four walls, in that case also the force acting on that is not static. You consider this marker only. The force with which I am lifting it, I am moving it is changing every time. Other than its weight, the force which I am applying is changing. You take the handle, the door handle that you open the door with. Its weight is fixed. That is not changing. Other than that, the magnitude with which you push it or pull it, the direction in which you push it or you pull it back, all these things change with time, right? Those are not static. So maximum forces you see around you, any component you start assuming, any particular component which you can see around you, you will see that most of the components have a component of force, have such a force act, which is acting on them, which is not static with, uh, with time, which is changing with time, maybe in magnitude, maybe in direction, maybe in both. So such forces as I have written here are called as fluctuating forces and stress generated due to such forces are called as fluctuating stress. So these are one of the most important components and most important uh, you know, parameters to understand in the study of machine design. Why they are important? First thing I already told you that they are so common if you see around that there are many components on which these fluctuating stresses act. The second point why they are important so much is that maximum failures of design elements of design components occur due to fluctuating stress. Now look whatever design we are doing suppose we have made any any component you see let's just take the case of any uh, door handle only or any stopper you have you must have seen the stoppers that are you know there in the door to stop the door at that particular place there is a stopper at the bottom of the door like this right so let's just take the case of this stopper we have selected a particular type of uh, material for this stopper we have selected a particular range of force that can be applied on this stopper and according to that we have given it a factor of safety so let's say we have made it two times, three times more safer. We have considered a factor of safety of two or three. If any of the force which is acting on this door or on this stopper is not exceeding that, then it should never fail. It should never fail through hundreds and thousands of years, right? Let's take another example, some more important machine element you consider, any particular part of any motor you consider. So you have made a motor, obviously it has revolving parts. You already know what are the different forces which are going to act on it. You have already done the calculation. You already know the variation in, in its speed and all the uh, major variations uh, which are happening in that motor that are known to you. 
you have done the calculation accordingly you have taken the factor of safety to make it two or three or four times more secure and more safe still if you uh, you know if, if it will keep on running you will see that in few months in few years some of the parts will start to fail some part will break why is that happening if the force is not exceeding if factor of safety is already given then parts should never fail for infinite years but still they fail what is the reason for that the reason is that maximum parts industrially or maybe in your um, normal day to day life they do not fail due to static failure due to static stress but they fail due to fluctuating stress and hence it is even more important for you to understand what are fluctuating stresses how do they fail the material and every concept which is related to fluctuating stress which can be asked to you in your exam so this is why it's a very interesting unit it's a very important unit in machine design this has a special weightage the fluctuating stress has a special weightage and generally you will see that one question is asked from this so we will be starting up this unit with some basic knowledge about how do we represent fluctuating stresses okay so generally fluctuating stresses are represented using two axes one of stress other obviously of time since they are varying with time so merely telling their magnitude is not enough if we were having a static stress then we can simply mention the value of stress with the type of stress whether it is tensile compressive or whatever the type is but in case of fluctuating stress we do not only have to show the variation in magnitude but also the variation in the sign the direction with respect to time so such 2d graph are perfect for that so this is plus side of stress this is minus side of stress depending upon what convention you choose you can determine that whether this is tensile or, or this is compressive if i talk about normal stress then this part above this line above zero line is going to be tensile stress this is going to be compressive stress this is the axis of time and any variation of stress you can show randomly on this okay so if you have component with you on which stresses are varying so that variation in magnitude or even direction if the forces are getting compressive then this will enter into the negative side and this is how the variation will go on so that can be plotted here but don't you think that such variations are very random any particular component you imagine the forces acting on that are very random generally so it is very difficult to plot and analyze random curves we must you know know that how variations are happening to make some conclusions to do some analysis right so what we do is that we take some assumptions we assume and we take some approximations to analyze the fluctuating stresses and the approximation that we do is that we consider the variation of stress with time to be sinusoidal we assume to make this uh, whole approach simpler and uh, so that we can analyze this what we do is we assume that whatever are the fluctuating stresses whatever are the variation in stresses with time those are going to be sinusoidal variations okay and now we are going to start our discussion if we have a sinusoidal variation like the one that i have showed here and what is the maximum value of stress that is reaching in it this is the maximum value let's call it sigma max considering this stress to be normal stress let's call this sigma max this is the maximum value of stress that it can reach similarly this value is the sigma min minimum value of stress that you can see this value right and this sinusoidal curve is oscillating about this dotted line right this is the mean value about which it is going up and down so this is the mean value of stress sigma mean and this is having oscillations of a particular amplitude how much is the amplitude this is the amplitude this much is the amplitude which is denoted by sigma a so we have four parameters here sigma min which is the minimum value of stress sigma max which is the maximum value of stress sigma mean which is the mean value of stress about which the sinusoidal curve is made and fourth is sigma a or you can also write it to be sigma amp or simply sigma amplitude which is showing the amplitude of the stress 
of this uh, varying varying stress right if i want to write an expression for this and how much is the value of sigma mean in terms of minimum and maximum shear stress sorry minimum and maximum stress so what i can do is sigma mean is simply sigma min plus sigma max divided by 2 it is the mean value of stress between them if this value is 1 if this value is 1 here and this value is let's say 5 so how much is going to be the mean it is oscillating about 3 right 2 less than 3 2 more than 3 so this is how it is oscillating how do you find 3 1 plus 5 divided by 2 so mean value of stress will come so you simply have to add minimum and maximum stress and divide by 2 similarly let's just write mean as sigma m only and sigma amplitude is sigma max minus sigma min divided by 2 so what you did is that you subtracted the minimum value of stress from the maximum value so if this much is the maximum value you removed this much length the length which is equivalent to sigma min that much you removed it removed from it so what you have effectively is the total amplitude total stress which is being covered by this sinusoidal curve and now you all you need to do is divide it with 2 to reach the amplitude correct so this is the expression for amplitude these two relations are very simple yet very important in the further discussion that we are going to do about fluctuating stresses